What's going on guys? Chris here with Clutter Reduction Junk Removal in Palm Beach County, Florida. I just wanted to make a video really quick regarding a subject I'm being asked quite often about on Instagram, which is ironic. And it's about employees because I don't have any. <laughs> but I'm being asked where to find them and how I pay them. And Sonoma Strong Calling had a video recently, I think as one of their lives on their Mondays. And it's regarding employees, where to find, how to hire, how to manage, stuff like that. So I do recommend checking that out. I personally would throw in a tip of try to find former movers, like professional movers that used to do moving. No matter how long their experience was, they're going to have some kind of idea of how to move things. And if you're not a former mover or don't have moving experience, it may be beneficial for you because as you work with them, you can learn by how their techniques are to better yourself when you're on your own, if you do this by yourself. And it would be beneficial in general because they typically know how to handle items in tighter spaces and bigger items with more technique. So overall, it just helps prevent property damage when you're on the job for junk removal because the same rules apply. You don't have to worry about the pieces, but you still have to worry about banging up the doors and the drywall and the door trim and hitting tile or scratching floor. And you still have to worry about those things. So. I think it'd be beneficial to use former movers or people who have experience in that field. But aside from that, as far as pay goes, I may be a little biased here, but I personally pay relatively well because I am paying former movers that I know. And I'll do 25 to 30 bucks an hour cash. And I would, I've never paid less than 60 bucks for a job, even if it was a quick 30 minute job. And the reason being is, if they're waking up at 7 a.m. to come with me on a job and then come with me to a dump and then whatever, and they get back two, three hours later for anything less than 50 bucks, unless they're desperate for money, most people aren't going to want to do that. And they're not my employees, so they're not obligated to work with me. So I personally will pay at least a decent amount if it's a short day so that it's worth their while. And that's just my way of thinking. I personally, that's how I would want to be treated if I'm going out to help somebody. And... That's just what I've kind of always done. Now, what I was thinking of starting to do is a system we used to do at one of the moving companies I used to work for, where let's say you normally made 15 bucks an hour. For a moving company, for a moving company, um, when you arrive at the warehouse, you clock in, you get your truck ready, do your paperwork, you drive to the client's house, the moment you get there is when their clock starts. So that's when they start paying the company for your time. And you load up, you drive to the next place, you offload, the clock stops. That's when the company stops being paid by the client. So during that time when money is coming in physically, we are getting paid a few dollars extra. However, the time it takes us to get there and the time it takes us to get back and the time in between, we're getting paid a few dollars less. So it was a way for the moving company to maximize their profits by reducing the fact that they're having to pay a normal rate for us to sit in traffic for 45 minutes or for the guys to go milk the clock and go sit at a gas station for a half hour or to pretend to be marketing. So it was just a way to kind of cover their end a little bit, but it wasn't hurtful for us because moving is 80% of the time you're on the clock. So 80% of the time we were making a few dollars more than normal and it made up for the 10, 20% of the time that we weren't. So that's something I'm thinking of implementing with junk removal. Now, obviously junk removal, it's a little quicker than moving. Your typical full load is going to take two hours or less. I personally get them done two hours or less. So I don't know how the national average is two hours to two guys. It's got to be a hell of a job, but Let's assume your typical full load is about two hours, unless it's a clean out, in which case you should be charging your client extra money for the additional time it's going to take to do so, which at that point will help cover you in the event you have a long job. You can pay, you can afford to pay your client or your uh, employee a few extra dollars because you have money coming in. And then the time it takes to get to the job and to the next job and go to the dump and wait line for an hour, that's all stuff that's going to be died down a little bit because there's no physical labor being put out you're just kind of or they're just kind of sitting on their phone doing whatever so I think it would be a good move for me personally as well and other junk callers because it would help maximize our profits a bit more my first week of January my profit margin was 53 percent and 
guess what my biggest expense is besides paying myself, my labor. So if I can help control that a little bit more, I may be able to boost my profit margin a little closer to 55 or 60%, which obviously is just more money for the business so I can invest in bigger things down the future. So that's a system I think would be beneficial. And I do also want to touch the note, I don't pay for a small amount on these bigger jobs. I want it to be worthwhile for them. So let's say I go to do a minimum pickup. If there's a reason why I need a second person, I'm going to find out what that reason is. And I'm probably going to charge a customer for it, or I'm just going to take a really big hit. So for example, let's say I need to go pick up a China hutch on the third flight of stairs in the apartment building. And you can get a part, you can get a China hutch down by yourself. It's a pain in the butt, but it's doable. I made a video about it once before, like how to get them off the top by yourself and then getting it down the stairs and stuff. But I would ask a client ahead of time, the moment they say they're in an apartment building or a condo, I ask, great, what floor is a stairs is an elevator. And let's say, for example, it's a third flight stairs. I would tack on $10 a flight, so $30 altogether. So that minimum pickup just went from, let's say, 99 to 139 Now, what I can do is I can take that extra money, sorry, 129 I can take that extra money and put it towards the labor I'm going to have to hire out. So now instead of losing 75% of my income, I'm only losing 45% of my income. So it just kind of helps broaden that profit margin a little bit because if I'm needing additional help for something, it's for a reason and I want to find that reason and I want to charge for that reason if I can. So that's kind of how I kind of help uh, handle those situations where it's a small job and you're having to pay somebody like a minimum fee. So that's how I do it. I hope that system kind of gives you guys a little bit of an idea and or some of the other tips help out. Um, I'm sure most of you probably pay your guys hourly. Some guys pay contract throughout the week and they'll just do a flat rate. They're like, hey, I'm slow. You're still gonna make the same amount. If I'm slammed, you're working with me the whole day. So however it works for you is fine. This is just something that I've always done for the last two years. And the system is one that I think makes sense for junk removal especially. So it's one I'll probably start implementing. And yeah, that's about it for me. I do have a little bit of a side yard clean out tomorrow. It should be about a full truck. So I'll try to film that. And after that, we'll be doing some moving for the organizer, a little bit of a side job. Otherwise, Thursday should be a fun day. So I'll probably see you guys either tomorrow morning or Thursday. We have a double job, one of them being a piano. So I will see you guys later on in the week. Thanks for watching. Bye.